we check out fishing competitions on this episode of Fishy Business. I head to a Take a Kid Fishing Day and enjoy helping the kids to awesome. catch some fish. We turn up a monster when competing in a jet ski competition. How's that for a fish caught on a jet ski? And Darren takes the New Zealand spearfishing team to compete against some of the best in the world. Witness the excitement and drama of competitive spearfishing. Every weekend over summer there are fishing competitions going on. Some are in pursuit of big game and large prizes, others pit anglers against each other in various styles of fishing. Many competitions are run by fishing clubs to promote fishing activities with their members. Fishing competitions can be controversial when fish conservation gets replaced by commercialism. But in general, Fishing competitions are a fun way to bring fishermen together to enjoy their sport. We've come down to Waitara, which is just north of New Plymouth on the west coast of the North Island of New Zealand. And what's going on today, the Waitara Surf Casting Club is putting on its annual Take a Kid Fishing Day. And I tell you what, they get a huge turnout. For a small community, they reckon they're going to get over a thousand kids. And by the looks of it, there's more than, uh, more than that already here. And when you add the parents that are fishing well, it's just an immense event and the community is supporting this wholeheartedly. So we're just coming down here to lend our support, take some pictures and see, hopefully, some people catching some good fish and the kids having a ball when they go fishing. The fishing started on the rising tide. This was perfect because that's when the fish will enter the river mouth. There's nothing more rewarding than seeing a family enjoying some great fishing action. These are the memories you take with you through the years. Shame the fishermen, man. Nothing's better than catching a fish like this. Hey, son. Watch out its best. Today I was here to help, and the best way for me to do this was to share some fishing tips with the kids and parents. Now you're gonna pull down with this hand and push with this hand, and then, but don't let it go until the rod's about there, right? You ready? Awesome, great cast. You just let it go a little bit early, but if you let it go a little bit later, it would have gone further. Some of these kids obviously didn't need my help, they were doing fine just by themselves. Got them sorted. Hey. Oh. So what I'm doing here, these things here, these little things are called sabikis, right? They're a Japanese way of catching fish. And they're little hooks with a glowing bead, and that's actually fish skin. But we put a bit of bait on them as well, and they're a fantastic way to catch sprats. And what we'll do is put a little sinker on the bottom, and a little tiny piece of bait. You only need to hook it up once, just through the little bit of skin there. So the hook comes out the other side. Spending a few minutes rigging up a line properly, soon had some of the kids reeling in the fish. This young man ended up catching one of the biggest kahawai of the day. That's a good cast, he's a good caster. Take a Kid Fishing Days are run by fishing clubs throughout New Zealand. To find out when the events are on in your region, Get in contact with your local fishing club. There you go, there's a boat. Lift, lift, you got him. Keep your rod up and just wind. Did you stay on the hook? Because you had a bite. Oh, I think so. Don't think he stayed on. You had the bite though, eh? Yeah. Feel how he grabbed it? Keep winding, see what happens. Oh, I think you got him. You did, hey? Well done. One cast, one fish. That's the way to do it, eh? If you want to take your kids fishing, great spots are all around. Your local wharf is probably one of the best. If you have a look down here, you can just see the amount of kids and parents that are fishing and they're having a great time. They're catching a few sprats. There's the odd big car wire that makes up a stir. So exciting. Love it. Oh, look at that one. Bigger than the last one. Hold them up. Most of the fish were yellow-eyed mullet but these were being chased by big fat kahawai that were providing lots of thrills for the young anglers who were lucky enough to catch one. 
With kids, it doesn't really matter what size the fish are, as long as they're catching. It's really great just walking up and down here, watching the kids and their parents fishing. And there's probably three main points that I've been helping them out with to uh, help them get onto some fish, because they're mainly fishing for small fish like yellow eye mullet. So the real keys are keep your hook small. So either use a packet of sabikis, which are little bait flies, or really tiny hooks like trout hooks. The other thing is keep your bait small as well and just put a small piece of bait on each hook. And the other thing is use nice whippy rods so when those sprats bite, they can feel them, hook them and wind them in. Three simple tips for helping kids catch fish. One of the things I enjoy seeing is the kids' reaction when they catch something unusual. What's this fella? Hey, is it a tuna hickey? You wind them, Oh, they good eating, eh, those tuna hickey? Hey, it's too early for them yet. The Waitra Surf Casting Club put this event on and all it costs for the kids to enter is a dollar. And for that dollar, they get a tackle bag with some mustard hooks, a sinker, a bag of chips and a drink just for a dollar. And they get all this fun as well. What more can you ask for? Let's go and see what the prize giving's like. They say never work with animals or children. And I know why when you see this young fellow steal the show. See, you notice how good looking we are? Yeah, yeah see. Oh. All the chicks are after us, eh? Oh, all the chicks are after us, eh? Not only that, the fish are after us too. At the end of the day, there were heaps of prizes handed out, and it was interesting to note that in each category, the largest fish was a good sized kahawai. Coming up, Kirk's in it to win it in a jet ski fishing competition. Hooked up! Oh, he's a kingy chasing him! Oh, big kingy chasing him! One of the things I love about competitions, other than testing my skills and tactics against others, is the opportunity to fish from new locations and meet new friends. So as the sun came up on an early morning start, I headed out to see what this beautiful part of New Zealand had to offer me. Right, so today I'm fishing a jet ski fishing comp during the wet and wild weekend out of Tairua. There's only four categories and they're all measure, so you can measure and release, or you can keep and measure if you want to keep the fish, that gives the angler a choice. But it's good because I like releasing fish. So if I can, I'll release a few during the day, hopefully I catch some. And uh, we'll fish for snapper, kawai, kingfish, and tuna. Those are the four categories. So we'll get out there and see what's happening. Tairua has a bar to cross where the harbour meets the ocean and care must be taken when crossing it as it can be very nasty on the wrong day. Just come through the bar. Conditions today were calm though, so I had a nice ride out to my first location. Okay, the first task is to get a car where I'm going to tow one of these little silver and blue pirates around, just in close to some rocks here and I'll see if we can't pick up a car while nice and early on. It'll be good to get one of them on the board. So let's see how we go. I towed the lure at about four knots around some large rocky terrain. Kawai often hold in locations like this and it didn't take long to hook up. Here we go, fish on. Hopefully this is the first of the target species for the day. It'd be really good to get a nice one under the belt early on. Oh yep, it's jumping. It's a car white. Oh. Such great fighters, the car white. He didn't actually look that big, but he's fighting pretty hard. Oh, there's a whole pile of fish under me now, a whole lot of meow meow. Okay. He's nicely hooked, so we've got some time to just make sure we can get him in. If so, if we want to release him, we can. I haven't got my net because I dropped that over the side last week. So there he is. Nice car wai. Good start to the day. It's always nice to start off with one in the bag. 54 centimetres. You got that? 
With this fish measured and photographed, it was time to let it swim another day. Released. He's away. It's one on the board for the comp, 54 centimetres. See if we can get one to keep now. Oh, yep. Yep, fish on. Oh, there's a kingy chasing him. Oh, big kingy chasing him. Right on him. Oh, gone. Oh, yeah, big kingy, right on him then. Let's try that again. With kingfish now obviously in the area, I quickly caught another kawai to use as a live bait. That's how I've hooked him up, just to hook through him. I'm going to get him straight out there, see if we can't get him eaten. Just going to troll him around slowly. And he's swimming beautifully, which is perfect. It took less than five minutes of trolling, and I had a serious inquiry. There we go, something's grabbed him. How's that? Still setting everything up, and I've hooked up to one. What a place! Whoa. Surrounded by reefs in here. It's not going to be easy. We've given ourselves a chance. Whoa. Whoa. Wasn't a small car, why? So you'd have to think it's a reasonable kingy. It's pulling hard. Oh! oh. oh. We've got colour. Oh yeah. Oh. It looks like a beauty. How is that for a start to the morning? My goodness, trolling for kawai. The kawai started getting harassed by kingies. Dropped out of kawai, it wasn't out two minutes. I was still getting all the cameras out. And boom, into this big bad boy. What a place to fish. How's that for a fish caught on a jet ski? Was targeting kawai initially. Kingfish are part of the comp as well. So when I saw those kingies, Whacked a kawai on, on a hook, towed it for about three or four minutes. Bang, this big bad boy. With the kingy safely on ice in the split lid icy tech, I decided to head out wide and target the third species of the day. Come on. Hooked up. It's taken a while, but I'm hooked up. Ooh, it took it with a scream. Must have pulled about 100 metres of line. Okay. Woo! The gaff's in. And we've got a tuna to put on the board. Look at that, a nice fat skippy. Good bit of length to him, so he's going to be good for the comp. After a successful day fishing, I headed back in to see how everyone got on, and it was great to see the prizes spread around young and old. At the end of the day, my fish took out three categories, which was a great result for a competition on the ski. Coming up. There's plenty of action at an international spearfishing competition. He's got sucked over the reef in one of those big, big uh, waves. It's 
It's March 2014. I'm here for the Inter-Pacific Spearfishing Champs in Tahiti. We're on Raiatea um, with the New Zealand team. We've got a young team this year. So today's our first day of training. We're going out through the passage, which is just here behind me. So we don't have far to travel. We're going to do a little bit of spearing outside the zones, and we're also going to look for fish in the zones. So we're going to dive it for the next week, looking, finding fish in all the zones, as well as doing a little bit of spearing. So day one, the team's really keen, and we're off. And this riot here is a fantastic spot. As I've said, we have a fit young team with a couple of supporters who help out on the scouting days. Everyone's keen to get into some nice blue warm water. Now this place requires you to be able to dive very deep. Jackson Shields heads off on a long descent. His buddy always stays above for safety. That's Jackson lying on the bottom at around 33 metres. The dive was to 33.5 metres. This fish is called a moo, or big eye sea bream. Not to be outdone, Todd Herbert shows his skill with this stunning green jobfish. Of course, any tropical destination, sharks are never far away. Not only are the fish out deep, but believe it or not, they're up under the surf. It's a real danger zone. Now, because of the area we're diving, we're diving right beside the reef, and you've got these big waves crashing over the reef. And every now and then you get a lull and you can move in a bit closer. And it lulls you into a false sense of security. And unfortunately, on our first day, Rowan's got caught out. He's got sucked over the reef in one of those big, big uh, waves. It's not only ripped his fin off, it's ripped his booty off. It's, he's lost his gun. And as you can see, it's done a lot of damage to his foot on the coral. Fortunately, that's all the damage that's been done because it can be a lot worse in this situation. So. It's a bit of a lesson for all of us. We've got to watch in close around the reef. Not happy. We later discovered his leg, while not broken, was severely sprained. The training had to carry on without him. Here's a great trick. Jackson's using his knife as a lure. He throws it, which means he does lose it, but it does bring the fleeing wahoo back in. It's attracted to the flashing of the knife as it sinks to the depths. Jackson waits for the right moment, then sinks onto it, getting a good shot. In the ensuing battle, the wahoo has emptied pretty much all the line off his reel. The second shot secures his catch. We were just diving the reef, just doing our scouting. I just did a dive and came up, and we were about to swim off, and I was following Dad. And then I looked behind me and two of these came swimming up to me. And then they turned away when I saw them. I went after them um, and followed them for a while. They wouldn't come anywhere near me. And then fortunately they started following the boat. And one of them took off away from the boat. And this one they had to go in between me and the boat. So I quickly closed the gap. And it wasn't a very good shot, but managed to hold. It peeled all my line off my reel pretty quickly. Luckily Dad had a, a float line to come attached to it as well. It's now comp day. Callum and Todd dive together as a pair. We're all travelling in convoy. Toddy makes sure his hair is looking good for the day ahead. Gemma Cookson gives her approval. So we're all lined up. We're in zone two. I've got the girls, the New Zealand girls with me. They're about to get in. Um, the area goes about two kilometres this way down to a pass and about two and a half to three kilometres that way to another pass. This area actually just goes past the pass. So we've got the men's, the New Zealand men's team over here. We're surrounded by, we've got Tahiti, Guam, Hawaii, Australia, New Caledonia, a local Raiatea team, and of course New Zealand here competing. So the gun's about to go off for the start of the, the start of the competition. They'll be in the water for six hours, and then again tomorrow for another six hours. And they combine the scores from the two days to get the top country. So good luck to our New Zealand girls. They're piling in and about to give it a go. I can't go anywhere near them for the first hour as the manager. We have to let them fish for an hour before we can go in and see how they're going and take off any fish they've got and fix any gear. So it's all underway. We have Gemma Shields and Gemma Cookson diving for New Zealand. Fish like these pretty angelfish are non-target species. Gemma Cookson is fishing a channel that runs up into the reef. This is what many of the fish use to get from inside to the outside of the reef. It's sort of like a fish highway. It's also a safe way to fish the surf zone. 
The flounder is a non-target species. They're full of bones, but they've got an amazing camouflage that almost made this one hard to spot. Gemma Cookson has a really nice eating parrotfish to start off with. There are 20 species of parrotfish on the list. Gemma C comes up with another great fish from the surgeon family. Note how she gently goes for the horn and not the tail. This is because they have a deadly set of blades on the tail that will slice your fingers if you do. The blades are as sharp as razor blades. Gemma Shields is fishing one of the channels and she's onto a squirrel fish. Jackson's pulled a really nice coral trout out of the very deep water. The boys are showing great stamina diving this deep all day. Weigh in time. At the end of two days, our girls came second and the boys third. A fantastic result with a very young team. The fish fed all the locals whose diet consists mostly of fish. Nothing gets wasted. Fishy Business is proud to support Legacy.